Row of Trullo houses in Monte Perdica Street in Alberabello, Bari Province of Trullo is a traditional Apulian dry stone hut with a conical roof. Their style of construction is specific to the Itria Valley, in the merge area of the Italian region of Apulia. Truly were generally constructed as temporary field shelters and storehouses or as permanent dwellings by small proprietors or agricultural laborers. In the town of Alberabello, in the province of Bari, whole districts contain dense concentrations of Truly. The golden age of Truly was the 19th century, especially its final decades, which were marked by the development of wine growing. The Italian term Trulla refers to a house whose internal space is covered by a dry stone corbelled or keystone vault. Trullo is an Italianized form of the dialectal term, Tredu, used in a specific area of the Salentine Peninsula, i.e. Liseo or And a Vetrana, in other words, outside the Mergia de Trulli proper, where it is the name of the local agricultural dry stone hut. Trullo has replaced the local term Casta, which was used by locals in the Mergia to call this type of house. A stonemason specializing in the building of Trulli is a Trullisto or Trullero in Italian. The corresponding dialectal term is Castero, I. E. Builder of Cassetti. Other areas of Apulia have dry stone huts that were used as temporary shelters by peasants. The photographs show some examples of these in the National Park of Altamurgia. There are many theories behind the origin of the design. One of the more popular theories is that due to high taxation on property, the people of Apulia built dry stone wall construction so that they could be dismantled quickly when tax inspectors were in the area. In available historical records from the mid-14th century to the late 16th century, the area of Alberabello is referred to mostly as Selva and occasionally, as a land from which grazing animals were excluded. Evidence is lacking as to the existence of dwellings in the area prior to the 17th century. A plan of the territory of Modola drawn by Donato Gallerano in 1704 reveals the existence of a nucleus of Trulli in the midst of a large wood, making up the initial settlement of Arbore Bello. In a geographical map drawn by Giovanni Antonio Rizzi Zanoni in 1808, one may see the Selva of Alberabello and, in the midst of it, a clearing with a settlement pattern of scattered houses that bears a striking resemblance to the present-day urban pattern. In an 1897 photograph of the Rione Monti, the truly are far less densely packed than today, being surrounded by enclosed gardens. The urban truly still extant in Alberabello date from the 18th, 19th and 20th centuries. After having undergone a process of densification in the first decades of the 20th century, the Trulli settlements began to be deserted during the second half of the 20th century. The rural Trulli, on cheaper land, ceased to be built when the cost of labor began to rise in the 20th century. The sheer expense of handling the hundreds of tons necessary for a single house became prohibitive. The style of construction is specific to the Itria Valley, in the merge area of the Italian region of Apulia. Truly may be found in and out of Alberabello, and in the areas around Loco Rotondo, Fasano, Astuni, Cisterno, Martina Franca, and Sclimesipica. The Mergia is a karst plateau. Winter rains drain through the soil into fissures in the strata of limestone bedrock and flow through underground watercourses into the Adriatic. There is no permanent surface water, and water for living purposes must be trapped in catchment basins and cisterns. The surface forms a landscape of rolling hills and ridges punctuated now and again with dolines and other forms of enclosed depressions characteristic of karsts. The trullo is essentially a rural building type. With its thick walls and its inability to form multi-story structures, it is wasteful of ground space and consequently ill-suited to high-density settlement. Being constructed of small stones, however, it has a flexibility and adaptability of form making the design most helpful in tight urban situations. In the countryside, Trullo domes were built singly or in groups of up to five, or sometimes, in large farmyard clusters of a dozen or two dozen, but never for the occupancy of more than a single rural family. Dry stone masonry depending on the area, the building material used could be either hard limestone or calcareous tufa. Traditionally truly were built using dry stone masonry, I. E. Without any mortar or cement. This style of construction also is prevalent in the surrounding countryside where most of the fields are separated by dry stone walls. In Alberabello, the structural walls of a trula are laid directly on the bedrock, after removal of the topsoil when necessary. Their width varies from 0. 80 meters to 2. 70 meters. Their height ranges from 1. 60 meters to 2 meters. Their exterior facing has a 3 to 5 percent batter. 
The stones needed for starting to build a trulo were provided by digging a cistern, an absolute necessity in an area devoid of water. The cistern was capped with a lime mortared barrel vault or dome that in many cases, supported the floor of the house. Roof The roofs are constructed in two skins, an inner skin of limestone voussoirs, capped by a closing stone, and an outer skin of limestone slabs that are slightly tilted outwardly, ensuring that the structure is watertight. The roof stones may be taken away without compromising the stability of the rest of the building. The trullo may take on a circular or a square plan. The circular trullo is mostly a temporary shelter for animals and their fodder, or, for the peasant himself. The trullo that is part of a grouping of three, four, or five follows a squarish plan. It may serve as a kitchen, bedroom, animal shelter, store room for food or tools, oven, or cistern as the case may be. In Alberabello, groupings did not exceed too truly, as evidenced by 19th-century notarial deeds. In Alberabello, atop the cone of a trullo, there is normally a hand-worked sandstone pinnacle, that may be one of many designs, disc, ball, cone, bowl, polyhedron, or a combination thereof, that is supposed to be the signature of the stonemason who built the trullo. A Christian cross is whitewashed symbol additionally, the cone may have a symbol painted on it such symbols may include Christian symbols such as a simple cross, a cross on a heart pierced by an arrow, representing Santa Maria Adalerda, Our Lady of Sorrows, a circle divided into four quarters with the letters S, C, S, D in them and quite a few others. The symbols now visible on a row of Trulli and Via Monte Pertica, cross, pierced heart, host with rays radiating from it, tree, duff symbolizing the Holy Spirit, and crescent with a cross, were painted only in the late 20th century and the early 2000s when the roof cones were renovated. The quaint symbols that grace the Trullo like cones of bungalows at the Hotel de Trulli in Alberabella first appeared in the late 1950s, when the hotel resort was built. Model showing the typical construction technique of a Trullo of Alberabello, the cavity between the inside ashlar wall face and the exterior covering of stone tiles or chioncarel, is filled with stone rubble and the vault is one of stone voussoirs. The vast majority of truly have one room under each conical roof, with additional living spaces in arched alcoves. Children would sleep in alcoves made in the wall with curtains hung to separate them from the central room. A multi-room Trullo house has many cones, each representing a separate room. Along with its exterior wall, a Trullo's interior room and vault intrados often were rendered with lime plaster and whitewashed for protection against drafts. The truly used as dwellings all have an open fireplace complete with a flue and a stone-built chimney stack. Because of their design, truly are difficult to heat, the walls are very thick and warm air will rise up the interior cone. An alternative heating solution was to use a central bracero with embers in it. The thick stone walls and dome of the trullo that cool pleasantly during the summer, tend to become unpleasantly cold during the winter months. Condensing the moisture given off by cooking and breathing, making it difficult to feel warm even in front of the fire. The inhabitants simply leave the doors open during the day to keep the interior dry, and live more outdoors than in. In truly that were used as stables, the troughs the animals fed from may still be seen. Owing to the concentration of houses, truly have few openings except for their doorway and a small aperture provided in the roof cone for ventilation. As a result, it can be quite dark inside. Some trullo houses have had their perimeter walls raised substantially so that their cones may be hidden from view, making the buildings resemble ordinary houses. A number of conical roofs have a truncated top with a round hole in it covered by a movable circular slab. Access to the hole is by an outside stairway built into the roof. These truly were for storage of grain, hay, or straw. Today, the surviving truly are popular with British and German tourists and are often bought and restored for general use. Anyone wishing to restore a trullo, however, needs to conform with many regulations, as truly are protected under the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization World Heritage Law. Since the beginning of the 21st century, a large number of trullo houses have been restored and converted into second homes or self-catering cottages. In 1999, rebuilding a trullo roof would cost about 3 million lira and in 2009, the cost rose up to 15,000 euros. In late 20th century the Monte district in Alberabella was largely a derelict area when a local craftsman, Guido Antionetta, began buying up a few dozen abandoned truly. Installed modern kitchenettes in them with a view to renting them out as mini apartments for the night for less than rooms cost at local hotels. He even painted good luck symbols on the roof of each trullo. In the Alberabella region, 
local residents who still live and truly do so only because they cannot afford to move out or because they provide bed and board for tourists in their truly. Thanks for watching.